Good morning, Suzanne Joy. Good morning, Deborah Leanne. We we were just talking offline and I'm like, oh, no, 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 we need to save all that good juju for being online with all y'all. But so anyway, we are here to open a new chapter and it's been a while. So we're both feeling the uh, lack of connection in the last few weeks. But as we came to the integration of the uh, ecstatic leader, which will be coming as a package at some point, an activation package, if I can get my act together and finish completing the playbook. Um, then now we start on the next light being, the one of the pillars, one of the five pillars of the School of Light Collective. And this being has the most beautiful um, gene key sequence that we're, we're going to travel through, just the prime gifts. And um, her name is the Wisdom Keeper. And I love that her uh, life's work is a gene key that you know and travel with as well, Miss Suzanne. Would you like to introduce our topic today? So the topic today is gene key 32. And this, of course, uh, we talk about gene keys and you know, people go, what is that? Well, the states of consciousness and it's um, this particular book is written by Richard Rudd. But when we drop into the wisdom keeper, I mean, all of these keys are within us, right? And, um, but there's very specific ones that show up in our lives more prevalent. And this one shows up in mine quite a bit. And so it's moving <clears throat> The shadow of it, which is very human, is failure. And, you know, I've had to deal a lot. Uh, we'll get into that later, but <laughs> <laughs> failure. And then the gift that comes out of failure is preservation, right? Because you then identify the things that you need to keep. And then the Cidic state that moves to it is veneration, which is such a beautiful word. It is. It's a beautiful word. And I don't think it's utilized as much in this era, but I think maybe it'll come back around because we're yeah, using it. Was, it was word. used a lot in um, in religious settings around the veneration of saints. Um, but what I found fascinating was the etymology of it goes back to Venus. I mean, love, beauty, feminine, you know, that and how perfect that we were talking about veneration or preservation of the feminine, the the beauty, the wisdom. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, I think that's beautiful. I mean, and that's really kind of, this is all in the ring of uh, illusion. So anything that's outside of love is the illusion. And that's beautiful. And that's where, that's where failure happens. <laughs> And so that's what we're learning is it it's a learning process, right? And and nothing is a failure, but we we learn that mm, that didn't work out the way I thought, and that's okay, but maybe I need to try something different. And we pivot throughout our lives. We if we pivot. don't take it so personally and go down the rabbit hole of I'm a, you know, I am a, then describing ourselves as a failure, which is right. really destructive. So, right. and so common, the, <laughs> like uh, we've got, yeah, of course. So that's the point. Like we get to try things on while we're in this soup and experiment and life that we call um, our lives. But the, the illusion is that we're separate or failures or you know, stick a label on it. Right. But we all are love. I mean, that's, yeah. that's our nature. And we're either living well and recognizing it or not, not living our life. Well, um, sometimes that's unconscious and sometimes it is conscious. So that's the question for me that I took away from the latest time. You know, you can listen to this stuff and read this stuff over and over and over. And this morning's was like, ding, ding, ding. So Am I living my life well? Because that to me is the preservation of my purpose, of me being me, all of those things. 
so beautifully, as you stated. Um, I'm hoping that we get a chance to share your new, um, I don't know what you want to call that, your statement of your, why you do the work you do. Right. Um, but anyway, that'll be coming in another space. But the um, the thing is, is if you want to, is there a pivot? Like you said that people just pivot. How do you, I'm going to put you on the spot. How do you shift when you're going into, oh, well, that didn't work or that was a failure or whatever. How do you get to, huh, what, what was good here? You know, what can I be grateful for here? What can I learn from here? What can I take yeah. with me going forward? You use the word grafting too sometimes. Right. So we know the things that do work and then you try something else. I, I've spent a lot of my life doing a lot of research and development. So I never take anything per, per personally anymore. I used to be like, oh God, that didn't work. Oh, that really stunk. But you know, like how useful is that to just get marred down in that? I mean, our whole, our whole being is curious and like what new thing can we try next? And so it's a, sure, you can pause for a moment and be sad that it didn't work out or your expectations were failed or <laughs> whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you keep the things that are useful to you. And then you're like, hmm, let's try something different. So it's staying in the curiosity mode um, and not go down a rabbit hole of purposelessness, which is its programming partner. Aha, uh -huh. that's where the purpose comes in. Because oh, to me, it feels like when I'm off purpose. It's actually not, but I, I think. But they that, play together so well because it feels in the like. In illusion, they do. Oh, so, they're in the ring together. Okay. They're purposelessness. So if it's purposelessness and failure, you know, like you feel like nothing's working. But when you flip it, and tune in to, you know, your gifts. And it's like, it's like clearing out the chaff from the wheat, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And if you get marred or bogged down in something, it's like, okay, what is the real truth about this situation? Look through. The yeah. Looking underneath and through and around. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, you and I have been on this game of, well, I'm still on it, of clearing out the house. I mean, it really helps that you just moved into your space a few years ago, whereas I've been here for 10 and I'm like, time to get rid of everything. Um, so every time I like pick up some books off of a bookshelf, I'm like, first of all, these are really dusty, which means they haven't been paid any attention. Why are they still sitting here? Second of all, who could use these? You know what I mean? Like, how can, how can I pass these along. So those, those little neighborhood libraries, or, or sometimes it's just something I'm thinking, this would be a good goodwill book. Somebody's going to walk along and go, Oh my God, there's my message. So I'm just, uh, I, I I'm constantly looking at how can I, uh, I keep calling it clearing, cleaning, um, creating, and um and completing like it's like a cycle to me yeah. right right so how do how do you so where i mean i think of preservation is immediately going to like you make preserves out of gel out of berries or you preserve like it's a, a recycle reuse reduce kind of environmental thing I don't think of it very often in terms of energy. And I'm wanting to ask you about the energetics of this, because I feel like there's, I mean, that's where, that's where we're playing now. Right. I mean, we right. stop looking at all of that external insanity yeah, and focus on what's going on energetically. Well, and I think too, when you think about um, the energy of something, we, we also have to challenge and be the observer of our own thoughts. And that's some of what I just, you know, mentioned, like when you get caught in a trap of something that you think is true, 
you know, have you ever stopped to pause and really look at your own belief system? Have you to say, is that loving? Is it coming from a loving space? Because if it's not coming from a loving space, that's coming from someplace else. And so pause. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like, hmm. Because if we are from the source of creation, which is based in love, the rest of it is um, experiential, right? But we can play in it in our minds, I think. And we have such imaginations. And then we can think about what we want to create next. Not only, you know, because mental is the picture that then matter is formulated. I mean, we're all alchemists. And so we get that opportunity to create something different. Yeah. And there's also that. So there's the energetics of the image. There's the energetics of the words, the the story Mm -hmm. that goes in there. Um, There's the energetics of curiosity, which immediately as soon as I say that my whole body, like my shoulders go down and I, my heart opens, it's a more opening versus, uh, like there is no way out of this. I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm a failure. You know what I mean? Like immediately my shoulders go this and I just, and my voice drops. And so it's the, you would use tone or, uh, something to, to shift sometimes we need to I remember when you would be working through stuff and when we lived together and you would go <laughs> and take a bath and you'd be in there singing and to- you know what I mean you'd be doing your thing and you'd come out and you were like what fairy just came out of the bathroom because I mean you would be a different person than who went into that bathroom and I used to uh laugh because I'd hear you because it kind of reverberates in the house but um I I wonder how often do we use our voices as that tuning fork to recalibrate to re uh set the energy yeah that's a that's a great question I found it to be a useful tool um to to clear out just to just to allow spirit my my and my energy to come through me well look how that ties into the pulse of intuition this week yeah so i'm laughing because there's no accidents when we schedule these things how they've kind of fall into play and i want to add to you because i think you taught the master class on this when we did the wisdom keeper um this is about ancestral reverence and allowing the ancestral lineage, uh, the, the wisdom to come through. And I feel like we close off from that in so many ways. Sorry, I picked up a crystal because I felt like I needed to hold that. Um, <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm curious because I had never heard this before either, is he said that a lot of the shamans when they're tapping into the lineage that they, their wisdom lineage, they thank their ancestors. Mm -hmm. And I started that yesterday. (laughs) Sorry guys. Um, I, because I wasn't aware that there's acknowledgement um, and gratitude that helps to keep that channel flowing, if you will. Yeah. So I want to ask you a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit more about ancestral reverence and how does that play with wisdom and mm. uh, preservation? And then I guess we can see how it ties into intuition. But anyway, can you play with those? Um, yeah, I. it's interesting because as I was um, being raised in this lifetime, you know, I, I really feel like I, I got a lot of great foundation that connected to from other periods of time and, and it's a Christ lineage. Um, and the love that's poured through Mm. that space and, you know, certainly having Jesus as a way shower, um, 
and then all my other my grand even like even thinking of my own family my grandmother and my mother were healers and um the the love that and care that they have brought in to keep that moving forward i mean still I, you still talk to your yes. to nancy right i mean i right. i know her as no nancy. no and i do and you know this isn't a scary thing i at a and it's very interesting that I um, play around in this key of the ring of illusion. I also play around in the ring of life and death. And the when you think about the programming partners of the ring of illusion, when we talk about um, failure and purposelessness, you also talk about preservation and totality, mm. which then goes to the Cidic state of veneration and immortality guys we we are immortal Mm -hmm. and so yes we move beyond these vehicles but like as a child i knew very young um when people would move on you know like but i still felt them i still knew them and it wasn't so scary it was sad of course it's sad when people yeah because yeah. they aren't there to talk to you anymore in that form right but yeah right so this is if you are moving through loss of a loved one in this space i'm sorry um but but think of it like a ship this is how i did this as a child i pictured my grandmother or whomever that was passing away And they were on a ship on the horizon and they were just moving along on the horizon. I still felt their energy, but I didn't see them anymore. Right. I hope that's a a helpful analogy. I love that. And it's, it's true with past pets. Mm -hmm. It's true with past family members. I have, um, unfortunately, uh, two or three women that I went to college with and was roommates with have passed and um some of them really really early one was just maybe I don't even think she was 30 yet and it was immediate pretty much car accident boom gone and I am you know I can feel them at times especially Mm -hmm. when I look at photos of us all together I'm like hey still feeling you. So I'm loving that. Um, and I, and I have had my father and my mother and my grandmother show up in various ways at different times, either through their voice or through something I'm cooking. And I'm like, yep, we need parsley. Don't we grandma? She was always like, go out and pick some parsley from the garden. (laughs) Yeah. I I love love that. that. And I'm like, okay. Uh, that you, you sense their presence and they are they're within you and so you're never I mean it's funny you you may be I always said I I'm never uh I may be alone but I'm not lonely (laughs) oh yeah that's that's a that's a funny one I just I I am constantly that my thing it's I'm there's no way that we're ever alone completely um I, I mean disconnected. So I want to tie back to, as we go through the next four weeks of talking about the wisdom keeper, we're going to continue building this archetype and playing with um, this specific light being who was channeled by Patricia Wald Hopkins um, as wanting to anchor in the school of light collective here on earth. Um, And and get some ways of how we can start embodying this wisdom within us. And then at the end of our time together, after we go through the four prime gifts, we will also have an integration session. And then there will be a masterclass available to do this full activation within you. So I want to just put that out there and The other thing is, it's been such a joy to do this again with you, Suzanne. I've been missing our tuning in sessions. And um, 
if anybody has any questions, because we, I know we talk a lot and we talk fast, are there any other pieces that you want to bring together as we bring forward the preservation and the intuition this week? Know that when you tap into yourself, that's where the clarity will come. Yeah, in the pauses. In the pause. It's yeah. not, you're not going to find it externally. And the thing that has kept coming to me, and I, I've written about it several times, there is a lot of chaos going on right now. How can we be with it, but not lose our, our own anchoring of who we are so that we can continue to show up? Absolutely. Like keep so. the light on in the lighthouse. You know, yeah. um, it's the intensity is insane. And uh, I feel for the people in Florida who are experiencing another hurricane. Um, I was just there last week and it was a hurricane free week. But, you know, again, this week. So um, the thing that I would also suggest is really check into your emotions when they're coming up um, and take care of your somatic system. So your nervous system is really key here. So focus on breath work and taking eating well, eating well yeah. Um, water. Moving. yeah, lots of water. In fact, this morning I had a little conversation with my water. Remember we used to do that all the time and just said, may it, you know, settle me, cleanse me, support my digestive system and allow me to see things more clearly. So I actually put that intention into the water with a little bit of spearmint oil. So um, thank you for tuning in with us today. And um, if you know anybody who's ready to listen to this type of information, feel free to share this. We would love to uh, have more people in our community. So take good care, everyone. Much love. See ya.